Hello gentlemen, thank you for being here with us during the Home Theater Cruise. So could you introduce yourselves to the European readers? Yeah, let me start off. My name is Paul Kasparian and I'm the Vice President of uh, JVC Professional Products Digital Video Division and uh, we're the people that bring you uh, products like DILA projectors for home theater and uh, cre video creation products like uh, GYHD100 high def camcorder and I'm here with Gary Klasmeyer, uh, Product Engineering Manager for Display Products including DILA and Dr. Bill Bleha who is um, the Chief Scientist uh, for JVC um, also, and uh, I'd like to start off by asking Bill to give a brief history of JVC and DILA technology. So, Bill, if yeah, you don't mind, fine, I'd be happy to. Yeah, the the reflective uh, liquid crystal devices that we use in the 10K and our line of DILA projectors actually originated with some work that we did did at uh, Hughes Aircraft Company, and the idea was to find a way of addressing the liquid crystal layer in a very high resolution manner. And we came up with the concept of the original ILA, which was a photoconductor sandwich with a liquid crystal layer that was addressed by a CRT. So uh, we took advantage of the early development of liquid crystals and were able to build projectors uh, using, using this device and it actually replicated the CRT resolution. And in this time frame, there, there was no other projection product that had the, uh, the resolution capabilities that we had with the ILA. In the 1980s, we started working on, uh, the goal was to create a projector for digital cinema. And we got some additional funding from the, uh, the aircraft company to come up with a device that would work for uh, actually the, the, the film film medium and this led us to building uh, some early prototypes of this just to show the feasibility and at this point uh, uh, Hughes Aircraft Company was being uh, changed around because of the, the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, we decided to go ahead and find a partner in the commercial area to productize the ILA technology as we really, uh, Hughes was an aerospace company, didn't have the, the background to sell this kind of product. And so in 1992, we formed a joint venture with uh, JVC, uh, Victor Company of Japan, to commercialize the, the technology and uh, bring it into the mainstream of, of the projection world. So that was, in, and that started in 1992, and we shipped almost 4,000 projectors in. 1990s using the original ILA technology. However, it was very much much more costly than some of the competing products that at this point DLP was coming online or transmissive LCDs. So we had to come up with something that would allow us to compete with the, with the new competition. And at this point we worked with the engineers at JVC Research in, in Japan to come up with this uh, what we call now the DILA or direct drive ILA, where now instead of a device that's addressed by a CRT to bring the uh, the image onto a, a bright light source, we uh, have a backplane of, of uh, a CMOS technology that addresses each pixel individually. So we took something that was very large and we created this sandwich device where the liquid crystal now is actually addressed by an integrated circuit. And this uh, led, in 1998, to the first DILA projector, which it was ahead of its time, too, and with, with uh, 1350 by 1020 resolution. This was at a point when most of the projectors were still uh, SXGA and lower. So we, we were leading the way again in resolution. And we then started looking at the applications for, for, for the, the DILA projector. And still, the, the tech, at the beginning, the technology still was, was fairly costly. Uh, and so we, but we were able to go into simulation, command and control, uh, a lot of venues for uh, like uh, conventions and uh, big, big presentations in, in large auditoriums. And in the meantime, 
uh, JVC started working on a consumer product, and this is where the HDILA came in, and that was introduced in a, a rear projection uh, format, um, what, maybe two years ago, I think. So the, you're yeah. speaking about the HD2K, of course. Uh, no, this is the uh, rear projection. Oh, the real one. Okay. Yeah. So we, now we had a, we had two product lines. We had a, the product line that JVC was using to, to go in the mass market, and also then we we evolved the original DILA technology and to move it up to the resolution uh, that would be at the state of the art again. And this led to the uh, QX1, which was a 2048 by 1536 projector, mm -hmm. and uh, then with the uh, HD2K, which was 1920 by 1080. And so these were the now these two product lines coexist in, in the marketplace, and uh, the 10K now is kind of the evolution of our of our first HD 2K projector. So that's kind of a capsule of, yeah. of, the, of the history. Yeah. So during the, this very cruise, you know, you had a surprising store, an actual demonstration yeah. on the newest 10K. So that was a very pleasant surprise for us, you know, on such a cruise attendees. So can you elaborate on this newest product? So uh, again, the gentleman on my left, Gary Klasmeyer, uh, works very closely with our, uh, our factory in Japan uh, and, and studies the market very closely in order to bring uh, the, the best quality DILA products and other products uh, to the consumer, and in this case, to the home theater market. And um, as you just indicated, uh, we we did have a surprise for everyone on the home theater cruise, and, and Gary's going to talk about what we brought here with us this week. Yes, this week we had the first showing uh, in the United States of the DLA HD 10K projector, and this is a product that we've designed specifically for the home theater market. Uh, as Bill mentioned, we were primarily in the industrial market for applications of simulation. And we started out in the DILA market with the G series and then moved to the SX series, which is a 4x3 projector, and then on to the HX1, HX2, and now this is a, another continuation in that series, the HD 10K, which is a, a full resolution 1920 by 1080 p projector. And this is designed to have a very stylish case, uh, very quiet operation that's required for home theater as well as a 1080p DVI input to achieve a full digital signal path to, to give the best resolution and definition on the screen. Uh, in the future, we will be also uh, showing a separate unit which will have us, uh, the, give us the ability to go on and um, have different lens options in terms of lens throw uh, for short throw applications and then also long throw applications. Uh, there's some differences in the United States market where our, our home theaters tend to be very large and the projector is mounted oftentimes behind uh, a projection window or even in the rear of the room so it was necessary for us to get much longer lenses on this particular projector to accommodate those sizes of theaters in the United States as well as have a short throw version for other areas of the world. So let's make two choices, you know. Yes. So. But uh, how about the scaler, if I may ask? Yes, in terms of processing, there are different requirements. Um, this projector has such high quality. We also use it in post-production facilities. We also use this in broadcast facilities. And the input signals vary somewhat. Uh, in a meeting room, high definition application, you might want to feed a computer into this at v varying resolutions so that you can show a computer PowerPoint presentation as well as show the very best quality high definition video presentation at the same time. Uh, the homeowner might not have that requirement uh, as well as uh, the homeowner may not want to have an HDSDI input. So we've made a choice to go with a variety of processors, 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 go with a variety of processors. Go processors, go processors, go processors, go processors, go processors, go processors, go.